I'm Jared Lanham, and welcome back to Refiner's Forge. So one of the most popular items I forge and I sell online are these little folding handle little camp skillets. Uh, but I'm starting a new line of skillet, and that is the oak leaf handle skillet for the home. It's a professional level skillet with character and style. So uh, I thought I would show you how I forge these and what kind of work goes into making one of these. Let's get started. All right, so this is uh, my Langmeyer Systems Crossfire CNC Plasma Table. Great piece of equipment. Uh, but uh, yeah, so first step is to cut out the blanks for the uh, skillet. And so I'm going to cut out the round disc, the skillet itself, and then I'm going to cut out the blank for the handle. Uh, so the CNC plastic table get, leaves a little slag on the back, so we're just going to take the wire brush and clean that off. Right, we're going to slag cleaned off, uh, so uh, cut the holes, but uh, I need to drill them out, just clean them up a little bit. So we'll go to the drill press and drill those holes out. This is a 3 8 inch hole I drill up here, and that's so you can hang the skillet. And these are quarter inch holes, and that's what uh, we'll use quarter inch rivets to rivet the handle to the skillet. So I was going to have uh, Vince file the sides. Okay. And so I don't know which vice is best, that one or that one. or. are going to work this up on end. Together. Yeah, however you want to. I just don't know if I should grab you a new file or not. Yeah, but uh, to support it, to 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 get to get this, okay. to get most of that first. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's gonna be flexing. And it's hard to. Right, right, right. That'd be my suggestion. And then what I do after I get that file good, then all I do is come with the file oh, like that this. Me what I'm looking for. Yeah, and then I then I just knock it off by hand because you don't need a lot of. Worry about these up here and. No, no. I, I hit those with the the wire cup when it's hot and it takes off the. Yeah. All right, so we're going to set the handle aside for a little bit. And we're going to use uh, concentrate on the skillet part now. So, uh, so how do I forge the skillet? Well, I don't use any press or dies to do that. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Some guys do that. That's fine. I just I like the, uh, the character uh, um, that it gives from the hand forged. And so this is the piece of equipment I use for that. This is a swage block. So uh, it has a lot of different radiuses and stuff on it. You can do all kinds of different things with, but primarily today to forge the skillet, we'll be using this area right here and then these two hollow spots here. So, all right, first thing we're going to do while it's flat, I'm going to put my touch mark in it. It's kind of my signature I put on most of my pieces. I'm going to start using the, uh, the, the depression in the swage block here to start dishing the skillet out. So I got the skillet roughly dished out, and so next heat we're going to start working uh, raising raising the sides, and we're going to use uh, the holes here 
in the, uh, these areas in the swage block right here to start raising the sides. I got a smaller radius rounding hammer. And it's gonna start kind of forging into that, uh, that round hole in the swage block. And that'll start raising the edge. Work back, kind of even everything out, but it's good. So I'll just I'll just keep doing that, taking more heats, and keep doing that all the way around the edge. All right, now I've gone all the way around the edge raising it, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm just kinda gonna do what I, what I call a cold pass. Just hammering. And so what this does is help, just helps even everything up. All right, so I'm gonna use the round face of this hammer to what I, put, what I call put a scalloped edge on, and so that's just purely for aesthetics, give it that little bit extra appeal. So I'm going to work on flattening this gold. I'm going to hammer it down and then flip it over and hammer it flat. So I've got the height, I got the height of the sides where I want them. It's pretty even. So now I'm gonna work on flattening the skillet. So I'm gonna push it down again. I'm just gonna double check. I got everything where I want it. All right, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take another heat and then that's what I'm gonna hammer this down nice and flat. Just checking to make sure it's flat, make sure it's not rocking. I'm gonna hammer just a little bit more. I'm gonna use a soft uh, uh, stainless steel uh, wire cup brush to buff the surface and that really helps uh, for the non-stick qualities, makes the surface really smooth. So we got the uh, skillet part done. Uh, so we're gonna set this aside, let it cool for now, and we're gonna start working on the handle. All right, so now we need to put the detail in the handle. You can see this other handle I've already started. Uh, it's got the veins in the leaf. So we're gonna chisel those in. First we're gonna chisel in cold, lay the lines out, and then chisel it in hot, deep in the lines. But first I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw them out. This is a this is a cold chisel I made from a piece of coal spring, spring steel.
done all the detail, portion of the leaf. Now we're going to shape, shape the leaf using the step of the anvil. Get rid of that relief there. Now we're going to go to the vise. And we're going to start shaping the leaf. Forging down each little point. So I'm going to take the cross pin and the suede here and give the uh, handle a little bit of a half curve. This will make it uh, a more comfortable to hold. So we're going to go to the swage block here for just a second. I'm going to hammer this so, that what, uh, so this is what's going to get riveted onto the skillet. So I want to forge it um, to the radius to fit the uh, side of the skillet. And then we're going to go back over to the vise here. I'm going to give the handle a little bit of a curve. All right, so got the handle all done, except for finished shaping of the the radius of the handle, and I'll do that once we get it riveted to the skillet. So, but first we need some rivets made, and Vince is gonna do that for us. All right, so Vince has got the quarter inch uh, round stock in a saw to cut. Uh, we're gonna cut two pieces, and then he's gonna forge the rivets for us. I'll, I'll kiss you. down the burr after I make the cut, so you stick in the rivets. In. <laughs> so Vince is cool that end off to put in the rivet head so because of what the metal expands obviously when it gets hot and so it fits in better if you cool that one end off. Do you have the punch over there? Or? Yes, I do. Okay. It's got to be hot. <laughs> I think he burned all the nerves out of his fingers years ago. <laughs> now, I cooled it for a moment in the water. Yeah, so on this rivet, you probably should have stopped like three hits before you did. I, I you, went to. You overforged it. So uh, it'll st this one will still work, but just okay. uh, on good. the next one. And make sure it's seated good before you start hammering hard because it was still sticking out. So it, it worked out fine, but sometimes okay, okay. you can you can shove it off yeah. one way. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to fit the handle. And I just put it on there, and I put it opposite of my touch mark. And I'm going to make one... Make a line underneath. I'll just flip it over and show you. So, and that way, then I can I can line up the handle about where I want it. And once we get the rivet, then we can adjust it back and forth to make sure it's straight. But I just want a general idea where that needs to be. And I'm going to make a little mark there in the center of that hole. And then we're going to go here to the corner of the anvil. I'm going to put a center punch mark there. 
and then we're going to drill it. All right, so I have Vince hold up for me. Center punch. All right, there we go. I drill down the drill press. I'm going to take the, the flat disc. There's a little bit of a burr there from drilling. All right, so I'm going to grab, grab the handle on the first rivet. And go back over here to the vise. Take the angle grinder cut off disc and cut the rivet. I'll, I'll finish setting this rivet once I get the second one in because I, I still want it to be able to adjust. I'm going to look at it, make sure it's straight. I need to twist just a touch this way. So back to the drill press, drill that hole. Adjust the handle. So it feels good in the hand, done for the skillet, but now we need to season it so it has a really nice non-stick finish. All right, so like I said, last step is uh, seasoning this. So I just got some vegetable oil on this rag. I'm gonna wipe down the whole skillet with the, with the vegetable oil. Just heat it up and season it right here at the forge. All right, so now, now you can see what uh, goes into making forging one of these skillets. Uh, I like doing uh, the hand forged skillet because you just don't get the character uh, in a pressed skillet uh, like you do in a hand forged skillet. But uh, so I season these at the forge again with vegetable oil. And so they come to you when you order them, pre-seasoned, ready to cook, and slicker than dog's not on a cold day in January. So they're all ready for you. And uh, they come in three different sizes, often three different sizes, a 12 inch diameter, a uh, nine and a half inch is what we forged today, and then a smaller size, a seven and a half inch. I'm also doing matching spatulas and spoons, serving spoons, that kind of stuff with them. But uh, the benefit of these over cast iron cookware is one, they're lighter, uh, so um, not as fatiguing if you're moving around a lot. Uh, two, they perform very much like cast iron, only better, they're more non-stick. But, um, and they're very easy to clean. But if you got any questions, let me know down in the comments. There'll be a link to my website where you can order these skillets. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you next time at Refiner Sports.